All right, so in this part, I'm gonna finally do the private messaging that I promised. Private messaging is actually pretty easy to implement on the server side. I think most of it is just how you wanna do it on the browser. Like if you want a new dialogue to pop up, pop up every time there's a private message or just a new window or however you wanna do it. So I'm gonna to try to show you how to like implement it on the browser in the simplest way possible but it's all gonna basically be the same on the server side. And so the first thing we, we're gonna have to do is we wanna keep a reference to the socket of each user. You'll notice that in io.sockets.on, the function takes the socket as the parameter. So every time a user connects, they have their own socket, right? And so what we want to do is we want to save this socket somewhere so that later when we want to send a private message to one user, we can go back and get that one user we want to send it to and just emit from their socket. So the easiest way to do that, I think, is to keep track of it by nickname since that's what you're gonna be doing on the browser anyway, is that users are going to pick who they wanna send private messages to by username. It's not like they're gonna pick, okay, ID of three, five, seven, eight, whatever, whatever, to send a private message to. They're gonna do it by username, and since all the usernames are unique, we can do it that way. Um, depending on your own application, you might wanna keep a separate ID or whatever, but for now, I'm going to change this nicknames array to just be an object and since it's not going to hold just nicknames anymore, I'm going to rename it to users. So what I want to happen now is I want the nickname to be the key to the user's object and then the values to be the sockets. So instead of checking to see if um, the nickname the user entered is in the array and checking the index, Instead, we're just going to do if data in users. That actually makes it simpler. And then instead of pushing it onto the nicknames array, we're going to go users socket.nickname equals and then just put the socket. So we're using the nickname as the key and just saving the socket in there. And then we have to change update nicknames to not send the nicknames, but to send the users. And then same thing over here, we need to update our splice method because it's not an array anymore. So we're just gonna do delete users socket.nickname. Okay. And then we have to update some things on the client side, so like, Actually, wait. Oops, I don't actually want to send the entire user's object, right? Because all I want is the keys to the object. I don't want to send the socket to the to the client side. That doesn't make sense. So I'm just going to do object.keys and then users. And then I don't have to change anything over here because it's just an array of the nicknames like we had before. So it's still the exact same thing. And I think that should be it. So let's check to make sure all of that is working. Oh, by the way, I'm using a Mac now. I just got a, a new MacBook Pro. So I'm gonna be doing everything on a Mac now. Node slash chat node app.js and then let's go look at it so good my name appears so oops i accidentally just automatically did my brother's name um so yeah it should work now let me just get rid of myself i'm gone now let me submit a message hello still works, everything works. So the way I'm gonna do private messaging in this tutorial, because I think the easiest way to show the concept is I'm gonna do it like, like the old style chat boxes where you could whisper to someone. And so our whispering functionality will be, you just do slash W for whisper and then the person's name. So if I was still connected, we could do Smitha and then a message. 
secret message goes here. But right now, obviously, it just outputs as a regular message. So we have to check to make to see if a user is trying to whisper and then change what we do accordingly. So going back, we're still getting the messages from the from the send message event. So now we just need to check to see if they're actually trying to whisper. So if they're trying to whisper, the first three characters are going to be slash w and then a space. So okay. If actually before even doing anything, I want to trim the the message so that it takes care of white space in the beginning and on the end in case a user does something like and then puts in the slash w I don't really know why you would do that but anyway so if message dot substring and then we can just start at zero and go to three and go three characters further equals 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 slash w space so if that happens we will do something. If not, then it's just a regular message. So if that happens, let's just put on the console whisper. Okay, and let's check that. Um, Sora. So, hello. Yeah, you see that it didn't actually come up, so that means it should work. Yep, whisper. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is check to see um, see who we're trying to send this message to. So it would be in the format of slash w space user and then space the message, right? So we don't really care about the slash w space anymore, so let's just forget about that and we can um, just use the message on from three onwards. So that's the start of the name onwards. And then let's find the index of the first space. So the first space should come right after the name. And so that's a split between the name and the message. And okay, it doesn't really matter if the user puts more spaces right here, because I could see that if someone was trying to do that, they just want the spaces there. You can trim it while you are outputting it if you want. Well, I'll, sh I'll show that in a second. Um, okay, so the index, we want the index of the space. So message dot index of and space. So if the index is not equal negative one, um, we've still got our whisper working. Oops. Else, if we don't have a space, then that means that they basically didn't put a message in. So we want to give them back some sort of callback message. So let's actually add in a callback here and on the client side to our sending message function. We can just put that in here. Add stuff later to take care of that. So I I think we can just add the message we want to display in the callback. So this would be like error. Please enter a message for your whisper. Okay. And then if the index is not negative one, then we can check to see if the if the username is valid. So I mean, if I put like slash w john and then try to message john, well, he's not in the chat room, so we can't do anything about that. So we also want to check for that. And so what we can do with that is um, we find the substring of the message up until the index of the space, that's the name. So 
this is going to be var name equals message dot substring and then that goes from 0 to the index and then also the message is message dot substring and then we can just use index plus one because that's the start of the the message the character right after the space and then all the way to the end should be the rest of the message so if name is in users if the name is in the users object then it's a whisper and since we're checking for this it will be really simple to actually um, to actually use this since we have the name and that's the key of the users so well first let's set the callback else callback error enter a valid user okay all right and then so if everything does work, we're basically going to do something very similar to this, except we're going to emit using the socket of the user that we are sending the message to. So since we saved the socket in the users object, we can just get to it using users name and then dot emit. And so I'm just going to copy and paste most of this because it's mostly the same I didn't copy that okay and so what we want to do is we want to change the event name to whisper so we can do something slightly different with it on the client side and then the message is the message we also need to change this over here because we still want the trimmed version either way. Um, the message for this part will just be the data trimmed with nothing else changed. Okay, and that's all. So let's check that. Hopefully it works. Refresh, refresh. Okay, let's check. Okay, we got our whisper logged onto the console, so that means we got all the way here and it did send this. So let's just add our socket.onWhisper on the client to take care of that. Socket.onWhisper function data. Ah, okay. So it's basically going to be pretty much exactly the same as a message, except I want to add a class to this so we can style it a little differently. So I'm just going to do a, a span and then class equals whisper and, and that span right there. And I'm actually going to put a span around here too. And we also need to add something for the callback. So, almost exactly the same for the callback as well. We're just going to do this, and I'm going to change the class to error, and instead of all this stuff, I just want to put the data. Okay, and then I'll put some CSS to make the classes a little different. So for error, I'm just going to make the color red, and then for whisper, I'm going to make the color gray and italicized. So font style italic. Okay, let's hope that all works. So, okay. Whisper, Smith, hello. Let's check. Aha, so we get a little whisper from Riku over here. And let's add another user just to make it even more clear. Oh, Sora, okay. All right, so I'm, I can whisper to Riku. 
and say, I don't know, something like, oh my god, isn't Smitha so annoying? Oh, whoops. That's awkward. I accidentally did the slash after the whisper. That's the worst thing about whispers. If you do it a little wrong, everyone sees your message. And so I'd probably get really mad at Sora right here. But, okay, let me try that again. Oh my god, isn't Smitha so annoying? Okay, and so... Riku sees that. I don't though. So as long as I didn't see this fail message before, I would have no idea. And then over here, Sora can just do the say. I mean, Riku can do say something back to Sora. I know, right? She so is. And then they're having their little whispering conversation, and I have no idea besides that, of course. And so. Yeah, that's basically it. It's actually really simple to do on the server side, I think. And then most of it is just like how you want to implement it on the client. So like maybe you want to make it so that like when you click on a username, a different dialog pops up or something. However you really want to do it, like I think this is pretty easy to extend. And most of it is just changing how you respond to events here like here on the client side. So you could change the the whisper to do something else, to like add a completely different div over here, whatever you want. So I think that's it for private messaging. It's pretty simple. Um, I think if I do another video, it'll be about multiple chat rooms. And so yeah. Oh, thanks for all the comments you guys have been giving me. You were so nice. And yeah, so I hope this video helped. Um, actually, I realized that I forgot one thing, which was showing you guys the callback messages that we added. So let me do that right now. So I can send a message to Riku just fine. But if I put in a username that is not available, like Xemnas, then I get this error message, error, enter a valid user. And if I put in an invalid name, but don't even put a message, I get that message to enter a message with the whisper. I can do the same with the valid user and then not enter a message. We still get that error message. So, all right, those callbacks work, and this time for real is the end of the video. There's a link to download the code in the description of the video, so feel free to use that. And as always, comments, questions, concerns, criticisms, whatever, are always welcome. So thanks for watching.